Alright guys, in this video we're going to make a feeder for the two-frame mating nuke or the two-frame nuke, however you want to look at it. That's a, a nuke that holds two frames. I apologize for the wind. Uh, this is not the feeder we're going to make. Hold on, let me, let me move all this out of the way real quick so you can see something here. Okay, so there's the two-frame nukes that we built. Okay, this would be part two. This would be the feeder to it. Now I built this feeder here, which is actually designed for a one liter Coke bottle or Dr. Pepper bottle or whatever. And I didn't, I made a video on it, but then I ended up throwing that video away because this one here ended up being nothing but an ant trap. So we're going to build a different one and we're gonna build it to fit those yellow round feeders so it's going to fit that feeder right there so that's going to be the feeder that we're going to build a box for uh, you can order those uh, feeders online so you know I'll put a link to it uh, Barnyard B sells them for example I'll put a link to them and uh, so you can get the feeder itself but that's what we're going to build our box for so you got the two frame nuke down here with the entrance and all that and then you've got the feeder that's going to sit on top which is also going to be uh, used for ventilation as well so uh, we'll go ahead and get that built and as you can see on these you had ventilation there and there which had screens on both sides and then this is actually where they came up they came up through that opening and then over and into the uh, one liter bottle which with the screen uh, ladder that actually came up out of there and into a slot in the bottle but again that was just nothing more than an ant trap so attracted too many ants wasn't worth it so that project got scrapped and we're going to build one for this this container right here so let me get set up all right so first thing you're gonna do uh, really what you need is a 1 by 10 I don't have any 1 by 10s I've got 1 by 12 1 by 8 1 by 6 1 by 4s and all that but I don't have any 1x10 so I'm going to use one of my 1x12s that I've got stacked up and uh, first thing you're going to do is just get you a square end like you do anything else make sure it's square just take it square it off chop it off with the saw and then I, after I got my square I'm going to rip this board down to nine and a quarter which is a 1x10 so if you can get a 1x10 which is nine and a quarter then that's perfect that's what you're going to need for your base for the, for the bottom of the feeder so let me go ahead and get this cut square and i'll be right back with you okay so it's cut square next thing i'm doing with mine if you've got a one by ten you don't need to do this but since mine's a one by twelve eleven and a, 11 and a quarter inches i gotta rip mine down from to nine and a quarter so button the, the guard there for the rail button to this side y'all side of the blade nine and a quarter inches and then just go ahead and rip that through. I'll be right back with you on that. Okay, so basically I've got a uh, one by 10 now. I got a nine and a quarter there. Get this where y'all can see it. So I've got nine and a quarter. That's the fourth mark from the nine. Nine and then a little mark, big mark is the eight. And then a little mark, three sixteenths and a quarter. So nine and a quarter inches which is what a one by 10 is. Now, the base of it, the bottom of the, of the thing, we're gonna, we're gonna make it 21 and a quarter because we wanna match it all the way out to the handles on the bottom. So you can see there, you got 21 and a quarter. Again, that's the fourth mark past the 21. So we'll go ahead and cut two of them to 21 and a quarter. I cut one, y'all didn't even get to see. So 21 and a quarter. So 21 and a quarter, again, that's the, the fourth mark past the 21. And just always use a framing square to keep everything good and square. So I'll just cut that off and I'll have, that'll be two of them. I'm making two. Okay, now for your front and your back piece, your same thing, your, your one by uh, 10 that you're using. Let's cut them down to two and three quarter. Uh, 
Yeah, two and three quarters tall. Because we're on our sides, we're going to use uh, three, three and a half inch one by four. But they're going to go all the way flush to the bottom down here. So we, we take three and a half minus this three quarter, and that's what our that's what our side pieces will be. So two and three quarter. And I'm going to need four of these. Because I'm making two. You need two of these per uh, per box that you're making. So let me go ahead and cut all three, all four of mine real quick. Again, you need two of them per box that you're gonna make. Okay, so I got all four of mine there, as you can see, all four. And these again, they'll just be sitting on each each end down here like that. Then we're gonna take a one by four for here. It doesn't need to be very tall because those those feeders, I think they're like two and a half inches or something like that. Well, two inches to here, and if you if you can see in there, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this sticks down a little bit below, about a three sixteenths of an inch below. So really, it's two and three sixteenths. But you can see that'll be underneath of it, so it's plenty good there. So the next thing is we're going to cut the, the sideboards. You take cut one by four. I'm just using this smart wood here, smart wood, and these will be 21 and a quarter. Same same as that bottom board down there. So 21 and a quarter. Again, the fourth mark past the 21. 21 and a quarter and you'll need two of those per box that you're going to build so let me go ahead and cut four of those and I'll be back with you okay so now we're going to build the lids and this time you're going to need a 1 by 12 uh, you can't use 1 by 10 1 by 10 for the base for the bottom of it and uh, the top is going to be that nine and a quarter plus two three quarters which is an uh, inch and a half so you'd have to have 10 and 3 quarter. Now I'm going to leave mine 11 and a quarter. That way it hangs over each side of the box just a little bit so the water, the rain and stuff goes off the edge and doesn't, doesn't ever seep in. That's just me. That's just the way I'm going to do it. Now the length of your, uh, of your uh, box is 21 and a quarter. So you're going to need 21 and a quarter plus an inch and a half so you got the two little things that hang over. Me, I go an inch and 3 quarter. Uh, that way it gives me an eighth inch on each side play. I'll, I'll explain that in a, a little bit later. So you go 21 and a quarter plus an, an inch and three quarter would be 23 inches. That's what my, my length is going to be. Again, I'm going to leave mine 11 and a quarter and I'm just going to cut two of them 23 inches. Let me get those cut and I'll be back with you. Okay, and the only other thing is, on your lid, you need two boards that hang down on each, on each end here. I just use one by four, and this is already painted, but that's fine, it don't matter. We're gonna end up painting them anyway, so. Uh, and all we're gonna do is make them the same length as the, as the width of your lid, which in my case is 11 and a quarter, uh, but again, your lid can be as small as uh, 10 and three, three, 10, 10 and three quarter. Okay, so whatever your width is on your lid, that's what you want to make these. So in my case, I've got 11 and a quarter, and on this one, I've actually got 11 and an eighth or 11 and three sixteenths. Yeah, 11 and three sixteenths. So I'll just make them all 11 and three sixteenths. doesn't matter if it's a little short or a little long. They're just the overhangs that allow it to stay in place. So let me cut those real quick. I need four of those. You need two of these. Uh, two of these uh, 11 and a quarter or whatever your measurement is. But two of them uh, per box that you're going to build. Alright, so the next part. This is your base. And remember these will sit just like this. This is your side pieces.
Okay, that's your side piece, and this is your front and your back. So on your front and your back, you can put ventilation holes. Uh, me, myself, I do the front and the back. I put a hole in the front and a hole in the back, that way air can flow straight through. Uh, and then if you need to, for whatever reason, you can tape one of them off if you just want the flow to come in from the bottom, from the hive itself down here. And by the way, something I did with my hives, clean it off a little bit, is I did put some holes down here, little drainage holes, just in case water does go through there and comes out. Uh, it, it has a way to come back out. But anyway, uh, if you want the airflow to come up through here and then up into your feeder system and then out one side only, front or back, then just do just drill a hole in one. I drill it in both because I can always tape one or the other one off. So up to you how you do it. But what I do, let me go ahead and put that back down here. This is, this is your front and your back piece. Okay. Find the center of them. So since we got nine and a quarter here, nine and a quarter, four and five eighths is the middle. Let me see if I can get it where you can see all this. So you got four and five eighths. That's two marks past the big biggest mark. And then up and down you've got an inch and three eighths. So that would be the fifth mark. Oh, I'm sorry, the sixth mark from the one. Right? You got the quarter mark, which is a halfway long one, then a little mark, and then the next mark. Okay? One and three eighths. So get your center mark on there. And then how may how big you make your hole is up to you. You can go quarter inch. That would be about that big. So I just drill through one side. Get my hole on the other. And then come back through on that other side. Again, I'm gonna do all four of mine. That's just a hole. Uh, we'll put a screen on the back side so that bugs can't go in and out and bees can't go in and out. It's just a ventilation hole. So let me go ahead and do all those and then I'll be back with you. Okay, now on the bottom boards, the bottom of the box, go ahead and mark you a four and five eighths. Four and five eighths line. And then what I do is I come in four inches from each side. So come in four inches from here over, four inches from here over. And then I go right directly in the middle. Since you got 21 and a quarter, you're gonna go 10 and 1 eighth to your center mark. Oh, I got 10 and a half. Yeah, that's right, 10 and 5 eighths, I'm sorry. 10 and 5 eighths. So two marks past the half mark. Two, two marks past the big mark, 10 and 5 eighths. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll cut, I'll drill this one, uh, that quarter inch, drill that one a quarter inch and drill this one a quarter inch. This one we're going to have to, to I'm gonna have to take the jigsaw and make it all the way to an inch and 5 eighths so it fits the bottom of the feeder. That's where the feeder's gonna go. So again, you're gonna have quarter inch, quarter inch. We're going to drill this one a quarter inch and then we're going to cut it with a, a jigsaw out to, to an inch and five eighths. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll 
I'll go ahead and show you one real quick. Checking underneath to make sure I actually got it all the way through. There you have it. Three holes. Now this one will have to drill out more. So let me go ahead and do the other one and I'll be back with you. Okay, so now I need to drill this one out to this size. So what I do is I just put it on there and I center it up. Center it where I want it on that hole in there so that it's centered in the hole in there. Let me see if you can see that. Yeah. So this hole is centered with the hole below and then I just take it and spin it. And that leaves a little bitty mark. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. Yeah, you can. So that ring around there, that's where I'm going to cut it. So next thing I'll do is I'll put it right here in that hole again. Get her clamped down good. And then let me get the jigsaw and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just put the jigsaw in the hole and then start working it around that uh, mark. A little bit more on my that's it okay so everything's cut everything's uh, good to go let me cut my other one out and then I'll be back with you we'll start putting it together all right hopefully you'll be able to hear over the wind I'm using the inch and a quarter of t-nails This is our bottom board, and there is a cup in it, right? So I'm gonna put the cup down, I mean up, like this, so the crown's just like this.
Take our side piece, line it up flush here and here. Take our end pieces that have the vent holes. They're going to go in between there. And these are cup two. So I'm going to put the cup towards y'all. So I don't know what you know about these feeders, but that'll go in the big hole down there. But you can take these off and fill it up with liquid and the bees can't get to you because they got this other cap. And these caps, they're ribbed. So when, and these edges right here are all ribbed. As you can hear there and inside there. So they, they got something to, to grip onto. But as long as you got that cover on, you can fill these up with, with liquid. Just You pull your lid off your feeder, pull the lid off the actual feeder itself, fill it up, put it back on it, and don't disturb the bees at all. And that's how it'll sit in there. You pull the lid off, pull that lid off, fill it up, and you don't disturb the bees in any way, form, or fashion. Now I'll put this one off, off screen lid. Again, we're going to look for that cup. And the cup is like this. So it's, you know, up. I got the crown up. So I'm going to put, uh, yeah, put these underneath. And again, you're just going to flush the side and this side. Do one and I put the other one on there. And then I flip it over on its side like that. Hang on. And then I get the old fragment square out just to make sure everything's square. Before I keep nailing. And it is. So, let me get that feeder and I'll show you. I'm not going to show you a painted, but I'll tell you what to paint if you want to know. So there's your two frame. 
frame new. That'll just sit on it centered up. And it'll be flush with that. Now, what you want to do, guys, is you want to take just regular screen, just regular window screen. And on the inside, pull window screen. And on that hole, on this hole, over this hole, and over this hole. That way the bees have no way to get in here. Neither the ants, nor the beetles, nor anything else can get in there. So just a little bitty piece of screen. Just, just hot glue it on or staple it on, whatever you want to do. But again, you want a little screen here, a little screen here, a little screen here, and a little screen here. You don't want them to have access to this. Now when you paint it, all you're going to do is paint the outside. And then if you want to, you can set that on there. And then draw you a line. And draw you a line underneath here. And then you can paint that spot right there. Do not paint the spot that goes over the two frame nuke. If you do, you're going to have a condensation problem. So draw you a line. Draw you a line and paint from this outer edge to that line. Then paint all of this. Do not paint anything on the inside. And then on this, paint all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this, and that. And then here, I would not paint the bottom at all. Right here. Okay? I mean, you can, but, there, but I wouldn't. So there you have it. And then you just take your rock and stick it on top to hold, to hold everything in place. So that's your feeder for your high box. So I hope that helps you guys out. Leave a comment, thumb it up, uh, do what y'all do. I love you guys. Get in the word, stay in the word, get the word in you. It's probably the most important thing you guys can do in your lifetime. I'm telling you right now. God is very good to people. He loves us. He loves everybody. And it doesn't matter what we've done. If we'll confess our sins, He'll be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And then He'll guide us from that point on in life and help us and give us wisdom and knowledge and all these other gifts and skills and things like that that we need in life. So there you have it, guys. I'm going to paint mine up and then I'll be done with mine. I've got to build this other one and paint it as well. But that's all there is to it, guys. That's it. So we'll talk to you guys in the next video. All right, so that's the final on it. I'm going to show you a couple different things, and then we'll end the video. And guys, I apologize. I'm not able to get very many videos out. I've just been ultra busy. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I broke all three bones of my ankle uh, quite a while back. I was down for six solid months, and so now it's all about playing uh, catch-up for me. But anyway just to show you what what all we have here the reason we made the lid a little bit long is so that we got airflow and if you want to you can shut off one airflow just by pushing it tight against one side and making it flow out the opposite side or you can just split the difference and then let let air flow on both sides so let me pop this off real quick so there it is on the inside and I went ahead and hot glued them because I mentioned hot gluing them, the screens. So that's what the screens would look like. And get this out of there. So there's your screens on it on both sides. That's what it would look like if it's hot glued. And uh, let me get the other one and I'll show you the stapled version. Okay, so that's if you just if you don't hot glue it, instead you decide to staple it that's what it'll look like and then the other part of it as you can see I painted all, all everything except the inside of them you don't paint the insides and then down below let's see if we can kind of look up there you can see I painted it there but only to where it meets meets the uh, the hive itself so when we flip this over, then you can see that the hive, the hive port portion has no paint. And again, like I said, you just draw you a line and then keep the paint to that side of that line. The other thing you can do is take you a block and set it on this side of the line. 
on on both both sides if you want to you don't have to do all this and then when you set that on there it'll have something to help hold it you know what i mean it'll it'll have a uh, two blocks running right up against the hive that'll help uh stabilize it but uh this will work in a two frame uh, and a five frame uh maybe even an eight frame nuke because we remember we made everything dead center so it doesn't matter you could use them in several different types the only thing you won't be able to use it in for sure is a uh 10 frame you'd have to make a different one for a 10 frame so hope this guys helps you out and uh again i'll have the link to the uh quick feeders hold on we got blame uh to the quick feeders there uh in uh the description of the video that you're watching currently so i love you guys get in the word stay in the word and we'll talk with you guys later uh, as soon as i'm able to again guys i'm just extremely i i didn't even put a video out on my other my main channel the growing awareness uh for two weeks now uh, it's just been that busy even with everything that's going on and how important it is to get those videos out uh to get the truth out to everybody so they're prepared for what's coming and not deceived and not full of fear and all that kind of stuff even with all that that need in place i still haven't been able to get a video out uh, just now being able to get this video out so it'll be uh it'll be as i'm able to do it guys i love you guys uh, get in the word stay in the word and we'll talk with you guys another another day another video